goodness, who is Paulina? That is such a great question to start with, which by the way, like, can I just say that this is so cool to sit on this side of things? Like, you know, I'm, I'm an interviewer, right? I'm a communicator, I'm an activist, right? You know, I'm a Chicagoan, I'm a woman. I think Paulina is a woman who gives herself permission to uh, be herself, right? I, I do radio for a living, so I'm on 103.5 KISS FM here in Chicago. I am the founder of Get Your Mind Right, which is a mental health initiative here in Pilsen, actually, based out of Healthy Hood Chicago. I want so many more things in life, so I, I wanna say, and continued, because I feel like, you know, I, I wanna tap into other things as well. So I think Paulina Rowe is just a person who is just not afraid to be herself. Yes, I am a morning person. I feel like by nature I've always been a morning person, but since joining, you know, at the time it was the Fred and Angie show, now it's the Fred show here in Chicago about five years ago, I really loved mornings because, you know, I got to wake up, yes, at 4 a.m. or 3.30 a.m., whatever time it was, but I was going to live my dreams, right? Even though it was bright, bright and early, I was still going to live my dreams in the morning and, and do radio and communicate with the city, right? And talk to the city and kind of wake them up. So I think that really pushed me into being a super morning person. The show, we actually start a little later than we did pre-pandemic. So we're about an hour on uh, a little later. So I get to sleep in one hour later, which is nice. Um, that's done great things for my mental health and just for me physically too. Um, sleep is so important. Please remember people to always get it if you can. My morning routine is you know, waking up, love coffee, can't live without coffee. But I will admit, because one thing about me is I live my truth and I'll, I'll admit it, I don't drink coffee for the caffeine effect. I really think it's just like the idea of having coffee, you know what I mean? Because I feel like it doesn't wake me up as much anymore. Um, or maybe I need some stronger coffee, but uh, I have some coffee, then I'll head to the studio. We prep before the show, so I'll get things, you know, for the website to post. We'll talk about, you know, in our, in our pre-meeting, right? We'll talk about what we might cover. We all submit topics every night before we go to bed. So every night I submit three topics about my life or about things that I think would be good, uh, engaging conversations on the radio. Um, one thing about radio, just like any producer would know, whether it's TV or radio, not all ideas pitched, right, uh, go through, right? They're not all brought to life. So basically, you know, we'll, we'll cover what we're gonna talk about, what we're gonna get into, and after the show ends, it's a wrap, we do some, you know, conversations after that. It's still like morning, basically. And once the show's over, um, I'll grab a bite to eat. Uh, we prep for the next day a little bit. We do our off-air uncensored podcast as a show. So it's just a lot, you know, and they got meetings and stuff kind of lined up for the day. Um, but yeah, my mornings are cool. So my breakfast is after the show. So I guess, yeah, after work. So for me, my breakfast, uh, I like eggs. Like, it's weird, but eggs are my favorite food, period. Like, I could eat it any time, any day. Love breakfast for dinner, like, I'm that kind of girl. Like, after the show, I'll eat then, which I actually like better because I like to kind of push out my breakfast kind of as long as I can hang. And then I'll eat, I pretty much eat all day. I stop eating around maybe like 7 p.m. My favorite brunch spot. For me, my favorite spot has become Yolk. And I know people like that spot a lot and there's different locations. Um, really fire breakfast and brunch. For sure, so one thing about radio that people don't understand or like, you know, when it comes to like our job, and I say this because I want to go back to, you know, talking about the action part is that our job is action. So I know that from 5 to 10 a.m. or whatever time the morning show is right now, it's from 5 to noon. We are on air. So we're talking, right? That's already a lot of energy being produced from us, right? Being exchanged and, and a lot of energy that it takes for us to like hold these conversations and to have these conversations. The one thing about working at radio is that we stay busy. Like concerts, festivals, appearances, you know, uh, recording your commercials when you have endorsements, right? Or, you know, uh, meeting listeners somewhere, right? Because you're gonna go do an event, you're gonna do a remote event. It's just always constant go, go, go. So I feel like that represents a really good image of like me on the go and what I would do when, when life was really chaotic like that. Like, you know, I 
would consider myself kind of, you know, maybe overworking myself, right? Because I knew what I wanted, but I always knew that this kind of came with a price. And it came with the price of you gotta move in action, right? You gotta be on the move. You gotta go here, you gotta go there. You know, sometimes I'd be up at four, like 4 a.m., wouldn't be in bed till midnight. And plus I want, a, I want a social life too, right? So if some friends say, hey, come out for dinner, I'm going, you know? And then I still gotta be up at, what is it, like 4 a.m., but I'm still gonna be there, you know? So I think um, with COVID happening too and everything that kind of caused our industry to sort of slow down in a way, we didn't stop working, which I'm so grateful for. Just like everything else, I think we saw changes when it came to the way that we connected our listeners, right? So typically you think radio, morning show listeners, they're in their cars, they're commuting on the metro, they're coming from the suburbs, they're coming in through the city train to CTA, right? They are listening to us to get them going in the morning where they're like morning coffee. And once the pandemic hit, you know, unfortunately people lost their jobs, right? People weren't commuting or people were forced to stay home, work from home. That changed how we connected because they're not in their car listening, laughing, calling us. We didn't have that for a, a, a minute. And I think we had to sort of think of how are we going to still connect with them because our listeners are, are everything. And we had to find ways to do that. So, you know, luckily, I always say we live in a really amazing age of technology like right now you know we're here and i'm complimenting you guys on your setup because this is so dope to me and i just feel like we were able to do that with our free iHeartRadio app you know we were able to tell listeners you can listen hey at the house right on your phone on your laptop like we didn't have these things 30 40 50 years ago even if you're listening in the car still because maybe you're an essential worker we made sure to shout you out every day because you were out here you know doing this in the middle of a pandemic, you know what I mean? Like we wanted to give uh, praise to those, you know, who did risk their lives essentially. I grew up with my mom. Um, I'm a single mom. Um, she's the Polish one. So that was my first language. That was my first everything. Yeah. And then, you know, growing up, then she got married. Um, she has my sister. So I have a sibling and, you know, I learned English. I think like most of us kids do, right? That are multilingual. Uh, I learned English like maybe in school a little later. Um, and, you know, one thing about me is that I didn't grow up with my dad, so I don't really speak with him, um, but I never felt not connected to my Latin side, right? To my Hispanic side, because I feel like in a way God or the universe kind of put people in my life to kind of uh, teach me that side of my culture. So I've had, you know, like my best friends. I was always a part of their parties, like growing up, you know what I mean? In middle school or uh, high school, I got to go and like be a part of their family, right? So I got to experience, you know, going to quinceaneras, right? I got to experience all of that. And I feel like that was done um, you know, all thanks to the universe because it didn't want me to miss a part of my identity. I kind of had that void filled with my really good friends, you know, and that's why I picked up my Spanish too. So like, I thought that was amazing. You know, I was really grateful for that too, to be able to like understand Spanish as a third language. So for me, I think, um, you know, growing up and everything, like I don't look back at it as like a, as like a challenging time, but more of like a learning experience, you know? And I was looking for a podcast because I was just very uninspired. I moved back here and I actually took a job at iHeart Chicago. I took a job there um, as a sales assistant just to get my foot in the door because I knew I wanted to be on the radio in Chicago, but it doesn't work like that. I can't just say knock, knock, can I be on the radio? Where I was like willing to pay my dues here. I'm like, I'm from here, you know, I love my city. I love radio, like two things I love. Like, can I, can I do it? Um, but I took that position and I was in the train coming back. I was really uninspired. And I was like, I need a podcast where I could just like skim through, which by the way, at the time podcasts were popping. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a podcast. And I wanted to inspire other people, right? Other, um, other millennials, especially like myself, somebody who maybe like was looking for the inspiration, somebody who, uh, you know, could tell the story, right? So like I wanted to interview people, especially people of color, people who come from just, uh, or just have really incredible stories. No 
nobody's path is the same in our industry because what you hear from one person may not be the same for the next. Typically, traditionally in our industry, we are known to move around a lot, right? Go to smaller markets, maybe go to a small city, move your way up to Chicago, New York, LA, right? Miami, whatever it may be. So with me, and there's other people too that I work with currently that have a very similar story. Um, I knew in my heart, like, I wanna do radio, but I also wanna do it in Chicago. Like, I'm willing to pay my dues. I'm willing to, to grind it out. I'm willing to learn. My big thing is like, don't ever be afraid to like, learn. Like, I'm not a student no more. I graduated from UIC in 2014, but I'm learning every day. Like, you know what I mean? So for me, I was okay with that. I knew what I was getting into. So um, the day that I started at iHeart Chicago, it was in 2016, and I believe it was April, I believe. I went to find out who the program directors were and all these people. I knocked on their doors, <laughs> straight up knocked on my doors. I was like, I'm Paulina, you know, I used to work in LA. I'm a Chicago girl though, I'm from here. Like, I'm from here. I was like, I can really help your station in any way that you'll allow me to. And he hits me back up and he's like, I had this idea of putting you with the Fred and Angie show, at the time Fred and Angie show, morning drive, right? And I'm thinking like, that does not happen. What the hell is happening? Like that just doesn't happen. So I'm over here like, okay. So I met them, they were super down, super cool. And um, got on air. My first day with them though, uh, it wasn't like that. It wasn't just like hopping on, on air though. I was brought on to do social media. I was brought on to like, you know, help pitch ideas, right? Like, you know, cause at the time I was 24, you know, I was dating, like, you know, partying every night. Like they wanted those stories and I, I brought myself to the table, right? Um, it wasn't phony, it wasn't fake. It was really who I am. I feel like they helped me so much though when it came to like actually by the time I got on the air, like they would pull me into the room from time to time. So like, you know, if they had a topic they wanted to discuss, maybe I had a bad date, they'd bring me in. Oh, new girl Paulina has this thing, right? So I was like, new girl Paulina, but you see they're, friend Angie and anyone in the industry, like they're brilliant. And to be able to learn from them, like I'm not gonna lie, a couple times I leave all sad, I'm like, was that good? Oh my God, what did they say? Why did they say that? You know what I mean? Or what, what, why is that person so mean on Twitter to me? Like all these things. They literally had to help mold me to be like, that doesn't matter, you did great. This is all character development. You know what I mean? Like there's a formula to radio. You don't just like go and like talk, you know, and just like, hey, you know, like there's a formula. So I learned all of that and then, Permanently about like eight months later, maybe a little less like six months later I was placed with a microphone. So that was like really cool Oh my goodness, I have so many memories um, Favorite memory I gotta say, you know, I think just being able to share my life experiences with people is is like, you know, you have a microphone a platform to kind of share you know your ideas and everything and i think one of my favorite 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 memories um would be when we do this thing uh 312 day right all day we do like a radio fund basically right where we like raise money for that specific organization it's being talked about all day long with every dj on the radio is gonna mention it and like we're gonna post about it you know what i mean like we're gonna like make it a big thing and last year they chose get your mind right so i felt so honored by that i was like that's my initiative, you know, we're gonna help people. We're gonna have people get access to mental health. We're gonna spread the word, right? We have this platform to do that and just even have the conversation about mental health. So that had to be my top like memory that I think I just had, at, you know, being on air and being at the station because that showed like so much unity and support. And I thought it was just so great. I definitely have to say like, the city, you know, the listeners and just, when I say listeners too, I'm referring to like social media and those who listen to us online, you know, cause I'll get DMs all day of, you inspired me today to go make an appointment with a therapist. You inspired me today to take a shower. Like it could be literally anything. And I'll sit there and I'm just like, wow, like to be able to talk about mental health, which is such a serious topic, you know, on the radio and people to relate to it. I like to be involved. So for me, like that's what keeps me going and inspired for sure. Community to me means, you know, being present, being, being amongst each other and looking out for each other. 
And I really felt, for example, a sense of community, like when the pandemic had hit, there were small businesses, right, that we needed support. There were um, organizations that needed support, right? There was just a lot going on. And the battle's not over yet, the fight's not over. But I felt like I loved seeing the community come together. And I feel like everybody really came together and, and was there for one another at that time. And, and, and I've never seen it so beautifully just like executed. And I'm just like, wow. So for me, I think community means just being present with each other and being there for each other because I feel like that's what I saw a lot of the past year, truthfully. And obviously I've seen it before, but never like this. And I'm so proud of our city, man. Like I'm so proud. So I had this idea one day. I was such an idea girl. Like I'll be sitting there like having you notice know, always like the ideas. <laughs> like what? Um, but I had this idea of helping people get their mental health right. And I'm very open about this. For me and mental health, I never understood what that meant growing up because everything to us was always like, keep going, don't stop. I don't care if you're sad. I don't care if you're depressed. I always truthfully felt, and this is an honest you know, thought that I've had in my life. I've changed my mind since, but I'm open about it. I'm like, I didn't get this. You know, I used to think that addiction wasn't serious. I just thought it was just, you or the person, right? Maybe not uh, having control over themselves. I thought suicide was selfish. Like I didn't understand because we were never raised in that environment to understand. Um, as I'm older and I'm learning so much just through my colleagues, my mother, my friend, like everyone's just teaching me so much. I'm like, this is a problem. Like what is happening? You know what I mean? Like why are men so ashamed to go to mental health? You know, especially black and brown men, you know, why are they afraid to get help for, for their issues, right? Um, we can see a therapist. Why why is the word therapist even labeled as like, oh, I'm, I must be crazy, right? I'm going to a therapist. Why, like who, who invented this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like as I'm older, I'm like more vocal about it because it just, it really upset me, you know? And, and suicide, like that's not, that's not you being selfish. Like that straight up is you not really thinking any other way. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just feel like how dare I ever even think that, you know? And I admit it, I'm like, I, I didn't understand. But now that I'm older, um, I have so much more wisdom and, and, and I just, I, I wanna help, you know? I don't want people to ever think like that. You know what I mean? Um, and depression, you know, it's not real. Like, yes, it is. It is absolutely real. And I feel like with Get Your Mind Right, I met up with Tanya Lasano, who uh, founded Healthy Hood. So Tanya and I, we talked and she's like, we gotta do something about that. So we created Get Your Mind Right. We've recruited over 80 healers. And when we say healers, that's one thing I'm big on too, is like the way that maybe you handle your mental health could be different from me. I could be seeing a therapist. You might be, you know, doing Reiki, right? You might be doing other things. And, and that's why I think healing is so important. I love that word because we all heal differently. It's just the truth. Queen Beyonce said, we run the world, right? Girls, we run the world. I, I just, you know, one thing about me is like, I wouldn't change being a woman for anything in the world, right? Um, it's true, we have our challenges, a thousand percent. And I don't wanna speak for anybody else, but once you start dissecting that, then, you know, women of color, the things that we have to go through, right? And then on top of that, you know, I am not Afro-Latina, right? What, what they go through, right? And African-American women, it, it just like, it just goes when you start dissecting it. But I think despite, you know, all of our, you know, um, challenges that we face, I truly feel like being a woman is just, there, there's just nothing better than that. There is not an obstacle I can't overcome, you know? And I feel like too, as a woman, I never let anyone, how do I say this? Like get in my way in the sense of, oh, you're a woman, you can't do that. Like that's never been in my vocabulary. You know what I mean? Like I can and I will do that. I hope. I hope it's a lot of great things, even things that I never saw coming. I think those are the small things in life that we kind of um, don't think about, right? Like I, you know, fell into radio in the sense, right? Because I went to school to study English at UIC and I fell into radio. My whole life is now radio, you know what I mean? So like, 
I really hope that maybe I could fall into something amazing too and kind of add that to um, the Paulina branch of who I am. Um, I want to keep doing my community work. I want to keep working with mental health organizations. I want to team up with more in the city and in the country. You know what I mean? There will be, I think this year, some stuff happening with that. So that's really great. Um, just getting the word out there, breaking the stigma. You know, if I can just change one person's life, like I, I did what I wanted, you know, I, I did what I sought out to do, you know? Um, and, and I would love and encourage anyone to seek those services if they need them, right? Or to begin their healing process, stay with the French show, stay with KISS FM, stay with Chicago um, in the future today and for the long, long future. I love to tap into some TV, you know, one day. That's something I really have never even said till right now, but that just came to my mind. I would love to do that. What does that mean? I don't know. I love how a lot of people now have so much creative control and we're able to tell our stories now, right? On, on platforms like Netflix or Amazon or whatnot, you know? And, and that's so amazing to think that we live in a time where we can create and do things. So I definitely want to go there, you know, and I would, like I said, best of uh, both worlds or best of all the worlds. I would love to maybe be a mom in the f near future, you know, and, and do just do the family thing for a while too, you know, um, and just, just do it all. Hey, thanks so much for checking me out. I am Paulina Rowe. You can follow me on social media at Paulina Rowe, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Hit me up anytime. Let's chat. Let's collab. And of course, listen to me every morning on The Fred Show on 103.5 KISS FM right here in Chicago.